Welcome back to Maintainer's Garage. I'm Bags. Today we're doing the rear brake pads on my wife's 2013 SLK 350, uh, aka or R172. And obviously you've got to get your vehicle up in the air. As you can tell by the wheel rolling there, we're in the air. However you do that, just do it safely. Don't die. I'm on my quick jack. It's pretty safe, but do it however you do it. Um, there are jacking points uh, right there where that little plastic uh, trim piece is removed just beyond that. There's one up front. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to lift your vehicle. You've got to figure that one out uh, for the, on this one. I'm just going to show you uh, the actual changing of the brake pads. Brake pads to actually change them out. This is a Paget, the OE pad, not OEM, but OE. And, uh, in the kit, they come with brake caliper uh, bolts, which is nice with blue Loctite already on them. A little shim kit. And if you're like me and you wait till the wear pad uh, indicator, the pad sensor indicator, pad indicator sensor, one of those, uh, goes bad. You've got to replace that as well. But first, we got to get the wheel off. And to do that, we need a... 17 millimeter socket we'll uh get our wheel off uh figure out what size tools we need for that then we will get inside the car and set the uh, rear brakes up for the maintenance position the electronic parking brake has to be uh the pressure on it has to be disabled so you can push the piston in so you can remove the brake pad old brake pads put the new brake pads in and then you got to reset it and all that but i'll show you all that the only thing i'm not going to show you is how to get your car in the air all right, let's move this around and get this wheel off. All right, we're ready to pull the wheel off as stated. It's uh, up, it's safe, it ain't gonna fall over on us. We've got our 17 millimeter, we got our impact gun. We can go ugga dugga. These uh, European cars, uh, most of them have wheel bolts, not wheel studs, so there's not lug nuts, there's a lug bolt. When you pull those off, a lot of times the wheel stays on the hub and then you just have to rock it to pull it off. We'll see. And standard star pattern, uh, loosening, tightening rules apply. And as you, can, as you can't see, because I can't pull any of them out, but just like that, wheels off. And lug, nut, lug bolts are everywhere. Put those over here, that way I can kick them off somewhere in all right, we got the wheel off. I thought the brake sensor was on the driver's side. It's on the passenger side. I made a goof on that, but they're based right side, left side, driver's side, passenger side is basically the same, except the passenger side has the brake sensor. So we're just going to do the driver's side since I put this uh, equipment up and I set up and I goofed on that. But when it comes time, when I do the sensor on that side, I'll set up a camera over there. I'll make sure I get that clear and in focus, and that's all taken care of, so you'll see that. But again, right side, left side, basically the same, except the passenger side, a.k.a. the right side, has the brake sensor on it. All right, now we need to start the car, or I don't even know if we need to start the car. We need to, yeah, we don't need to start the car. We need to turn the car to the uh, on position without starting it, and set up the uh, maintenance uh, menu on the rear brake. But uh, let's go do that. Gonna do a dry run real quick. We're gonna press this one time. Needles will do their thing, sweep, whatever. Then we'll be on the, make sure you're on the odometer up there. Then you'll press the okay and the make a call button. You'll have to hold them for a second or two. And they will, uh, then the maintenance menu will come up. You won't see me doing that because I can't hold the camera and show you that at the same time. But then we'll see the maintenance menu. So first button, needle sweep, odometer. Now we're going to press the OK and make a call button. So there we go. Now we're in, see where we're on pad replacement. How, uh, use the arrow key to go down to that. Go down to pad replacement. Then you use the OK button. And to move uh, fitting position, press OK. And now it's moving. Yep. 
and now we're good. Now you can turn the car off. Car's off, it will stay in the fitting position, everything will be fine until you're done, and then we can just come back and put it back. Got our wheel off. Uh, didn't realize I didn't start the camera. I figured out what size bolt this was. But anyway, as stated, like I said, we'll do the sensor on that side uh, after we go ahead and change the brake pads on this side. And again, it's the same, same. Uh, driver side, passenger side, only difference is that little wear sensor that's right there on the other side, which you'll see here in a minute. All right, 13 millimeter. Uh, the bolts back here are kind of a, a pain. You either need a socket with an extension or just a wrench and I've got a gear wrench and we'll righty or lefty loosey these. All right, and our caliper guide pin is spinning. So we'll get probably a 13 or a 15 millimeter. I'm guessing it looks bigger to 17. All right, hold that while we break this loose. There we go. That little cable there is in the way. Yeah. This thing is freaking tight. There we go. Now I'll put that 17 right there on that. And get that off. There we go. Not too bad at all. And the torque on these is not too bad. I'll tell you what it is here in a little bit. Um, I've got the maintenance manual pulled up over there. And then you just pull that off, set it to the side, pull this one as the whole caliper hat tries to come off. There we go. and pop that out and put that up there don't damage it and with that thing in the uh, i guess i should probably get out of the, my fat body out of the way with that maintenance uh position you can see it's pulled all the way back we can pull out our brake pads yeah i mean there was a decent amount when I say decent, I mean it wasn't it wasn't super bad, but it was pretty close. As you can see on this pad, my new pad, see the two rivets there and this uh, plate. It's the same thing as the OE pad. See the two rivets down here, and then this backing plate. So there's nothing to transfer over from one pad to an, to the next pad. We've got a new pad here. I'm gonna reuse these shims. Um, they look good and I'll keep the old shims just in case uh, some, I need a piece of sheet metal later. Put that ah, there we go and just this little tab, that little tab line up on that shim just kind of wedge it in, push in All right, why you no go in? No. There we go. And just like that, that pads in, that pads in. Ugh. We're probably gonna have to push this piston back a little bit. We'll double check that. And we will. The big difference here between uh, the Mercedes and like a lot of other like my Corvette or Lexus is that electronic parking brake is on the back of the caliper it's a plastic housing you can't take a clamp and clamp against it well you can but you might damage something so you've got to push this from the front you could take your ordinary kill you spring compressor or if you just have a threaded rod the spring compressor will fit in there uh, hopefully you can see that. So you take the spring compressor, those two uh, 
dials, this will wedge itself right against the brake caliper hat right there, that lip. And as you turn this, you will start to tension it up and you just got to kind of keep that flat as you turn this by hand and it will tension up on it and it doesn't take a lot and it will start pushing that piston backwards and then you can actually leverage down and push the piston that way as well. Now with that all the way pushed in we can put it on our uh, come on new brake pads. There we go. Yeah. Took a little <laughs> convincing that it was uh, wanted to go but it went. Now we got our brand new fasteners with the uh, blue Loctite on them. We'll hand tighten them down, get them started. And if I remember correctly, I believe it's 28 Newton meters. I got the manual over there. I'll double check here in a second. My, ah, get in. My calibrated elbow is gonna do just fine. All right, let me double check this. 28 Newton meters, but as stated, my calibrated elbow will do just fine on this. And you can get right back on that uh, 17 millimeter and snug this down. Don't tighten it all the way till you get that front one snug down. All right, well, let go and get that on there all right and now we can go and i think click wait wait click all right there we go that that is snug for sure we'll do that one more time for this one all right wait nope click now we're going to go to the other side and do that uh, sensor. Then we can put our wheels back on and be done. But I'll show you that. Uh, we've got to pull that and that off, but we saw that on the other side. We need to get that out. With the new one, you can see uh, it's got these little locking tabs, but there's no like push release here. And then that's the little sensor, sensor there with a little pin there that's down in there. So you can just pull that straight out and, and you see how that goes down like that. So you pull this straight out and then you pull that straight out. So you pull this out towards the bumper, the rear bumper, for example, and then you pull this one out towards the outside of the vehicle. And I'm going to get a pair of needle nose pliers to uh, make this simpler. All right, we're going to pull this straight out. And then we're going to pull this one out. There we go. We got it out. Little metal clip was hanging on for dear life. All right. Now we'll uh, swap these out and you don't need to see that. All right. And I didn't say this earlier uh, when I was taking this thing out. Uh, this sensor right here, it's got an eight millimeter bolt. You got to take that off in order to remove the caliper to change the brake pad. And here's our new sensor. It goes in that hole and the wire comes back around like that, uh, like that. So let's hopefully see if I can get this in without having to get my glasses. I may not be able to, we're going to find out. It's kind of like, uh, your first time again, huh? Well, for some of you, it still hadn't happened, but no judgment. And, you know, just kind of just keep wicking it around. And eventually, at some point, this thing will 
find the magic hole and boom shakalaka. You're in there like swimwear. And then we'll bring this up. Oh, nope, that comes up and around like that. And this bolt goes down. And we will plug our little sensor in. Just like that. Yep, and if you saw that locking tab and that locking tab were uh, vertical and that's how it goes in and you push it all the way until it's seated, then you can righty tidy this thing down and snug 27 newton meters, 8 newton meters, I think it is. Uh, I'll put it on the screen, whatever it is, and you're done with that. And we're all good. Now we can put uh, our car back in the, uh, get it out of the maintenance position, make sure our sensor doesn't pop up, and life will be good. All right, so we're back in the car, press it to the first position, and it comes up with fitting position reach to exit, press OK. We will press OK. It will exit. And they'll press OK again. And then we can turn the car all the way off. And now we'll start the car and give it a second. And hopefully our brake pad wear indicator message is not there. Yeah, it normally has come up by now. So we're good to go there. So now that we know that, we can put the wheels back on. All right, turn the car off, get the wheels on. Now we're ready to put the wheel on. There's a little lip right here, mounts up here. Since it doesn't have wheel studs, you just kind of got to put it on and line it up. There's a little tool I'm not going to get out because I think I'm better than that and I'm probably going to be proven wrong. But you can line it up and push it on pretty well and get lucky and be and look like you know what you're doing it's always been better to be lucky than good right right so yeah not a hard job not even uh that complicated the biggest difference with these like i said is that parking brake being a part of the caliper you can't just go get a seat clamp and just crank down on it well you can if you don't care about tearing up something but i care about tearing up stuff so i try not to and you just want to hand tighten these, and then you hit them with your ugga dugga. I believe the wheel torque's 97 foot pounds. I'm going to go find out here in a second because I've got the, like I said, I've got the, my little computer over there with the maintenance program pulled up. This thing is only good for about 90 foot pounds, so I can ugga dugga it a whole bunch and it's not going to get over tight. You can always do a star pattern, crisscross, star pattern, whatever you want to call it. All right, now we can lower the vehicle. And we're done. I just checked the manual. It's 110 newton meters, which roughly translates to 100, or, excuse me, 82 foot pounds. So I might over tighten them a little bit. We'll double check them once I get it on the ground. But you don't need to see that. You know, I'll just get it down, hit it with a torque wrench. So if you're doing the job, don't forget to freaking torque your lug nuts. Get the car on the ground, put some weight on the wheels, we'll torque your freaking lug nuts. Anyway, that's changing your rear brakes on a R172 SLK350 or 2013 SLK350. Thanks for watching Maintainer's Garage. Have a great day.